Welcome, we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, W-2 income, 100,000. We've got the standard deduction, 12,950, getting us to the 87,050 taxable income. Page two, calculating the tax, 14,774, withholdings, 15,000 to get us to the 226. We're mirroring that over here in our Excel worksheet. 100,000 W-2 income, 12,950 standard deduction, gets us to the taxable income, 87,050. The tax, pulling that from the software, 14,774. And then we have the payment, 15,000, getting us to that 226. Now we're gonna add a dependent. Now note that we're thinking about the child tax credit and the other dependent credit, and those are intimately tied to the dependents. So when we think about a dependent, then we're gonna be thinking what benefit do we get from a dependent? The benefit, big benefit usually will be one of the other, one of the two credits, either the child tax credit, if they qualify for the child tax credit, and if we cannot get that, then we get the other dependent credit. Although there could be other benefits as well, for example, if we have a single filer as we have here, and then we have one dependent, it's quite likely that it will move our filing status from single filer to head of household. So from a practical standpoint, what this uh, comes out to then is oftentimes when we're thinking dependents, we're thinking what's gonna be the impact on the dependents on the tax return. Usually it's gonna be the credits, but we also could have the filing status change. And in practice, you might run into situations where there's that gray area. Meaning, what if someone qualifies with a joint custody situation between two parents, for example, as a dependent on two returns? You can't file both of returns and have the same dependent on two returns, or the IRS will, of course, have a problem with that. And you can think about those types of situations and plan for those types of situations uh, in some type of agreements that are going to be set up, trying to maximize, hopefully, the tax benefits you know, between everybody involved so that everybody can at least save money from the government and possibly then figure out what you're going to do with it, right? Who's going to, how are you going to divvy that up? It would be a, a, one way you might look at it. So uh, in that situation, you, you might think, okay, what's going to be the impact on the filing statuses for the spouses involved? What will be the tax, tax implications of that? And what will be the tax implications of, of course, the, the credits involved, which could have a difference, for example, if someone hits the AGI limitation and starts to phase out the credit, where, where it's another, you know, because, or another spouse might not hit the AGI limitation and therefore might get a bigger benefit from the credit or something like that. All right, so let's add a dependent and start taking a look at it. Okay, so from the data input screen, we're just gonna add our first name, last name, date of birth, and then of course we need a social security number or some kind of identification number. We're gonna start off with the standard child here and child lived with the taxpayer uh, when applicable for the earned income credit as well as the child tax credit. For the relationship, I'm gonna put son, not child. Okay, so then we're gonna to go to the forms here. So now of course on the first page of the form 1040, we've got the child social security number so all the personal information they want it right up front on the first page says the irs and this one qualifies for the child tax credit because they meet the age requirements and everything they're under 17. remember that to be a dependent then they have to be under uh, 19 or 24 if they're a student but to get the child tax credit then they have to be under 17 is the general concept and then if we don't get the child tax credit, then they would qualify for the other dependents, which would be the idea. In this case, however, it probably pushed them up from single to head of household too, because, because a dependent is, is usually required for that. That will also change the standard deduction. So if we scroll down here, the standard deduction, if I changed the head of household, went to the 19.4, that wouldn't happen with every child, but that could be a significant change uh, for for someone switching to the to the to the head of household standard st status, 
So let's switch it over here in our worksheet. 19.4, that gets us to the 80,060, 600, 80,600. Roll in the dyslexia. Okay, number page two, 11,855, 11,855. Let's put that here, 11,855. That's gonna be that. And then we've got the credit of 2000. So if you look at the worksheet here, there's the credit calculation. We, we haven't hit the income threshold, which for a single filer is, I believe, uh, 200,000. So we're good on that. And we get the full 2,000 of the credit. So if I put that into our worksheet over here, let's say we've got uh, other credits. So I'm going to say other credits. And let's put the child tax credit. I'm just going to put here dependent one 2,000. I'm going to pull that into my worksheet. So that pulls into this line item so that comes out to then if i pull back over 9855 and then 15 to get us to the 5145 5145 all right so that's our starting point let's add another one we're going to say jill anderson second child so if i pull that on over to the form then notice there's no change to the filing status now because I don't, I don't go from a head of household to something else uh, at that point. So I'm going to go down here. Now I've got my two uh, dependents that are reported. Both of them are, are child tax credit qualified for. We don't have any change on the first page because the standard deduction did not change. If I go to page number two, the tax is now 11855 But I've got the 4000 doubling the child tax credit for the two kids that now qualify for the child tax credit. So if I was to mirror that over here, I got my other credits, let's say dependent, dependent number two, number two, and then I'm going to say 2000 comes up to 4000, pulling that over to the page one in our formula. There it is. Seven, eight, five, five, 15,000 gets us to the seven, one four five seven one four five okay now let's imagine that that they're over night they're over 19 they're over the 17 threshold for qualifying for a qualifying child and to be a dependent they're over the threshold possibly there too but we're saying they're a student age 19 to 23 so they still qualify as a dependent that being that 19 threshold up to 24 under 24 but they're not under the 17 number threshold to qualify for the child tax credit. So they're still a qualifying child in terms of being a dependent, but they're not qualifying for the child tax credit. 